Welcome to Common Talkers, where comics is always the top of our discussion. My name is Brandon. And I'm Mary. And today we continue on with our 52 book club. This time we're at week 20. If you're here and you have not watched weeks 1 through 19, what are you doing here? Go go back, rewatch those. Come back to where we are. Playlist that we have sets up weeks 1 through 19, leads you right up to 20. So we'll wait a second. Okay, full spoilers ahead. We're, we're going to jump right into this week um, with a character that we saw last week, or a couple weeks ago, actually, um, as he runs into Wonder Girl. Now, the first scene, of course, starts talking about, or it's a broadcast on the radio. It states that police found Calendar Man tied up and knocked out on the rooftop of the station. This marks the fifth costume criminal to be found in such a situation. Speculation has run rampant throughout the city. Has the Batman returned? Or is there a new vigilante in the, in the great city of Gotham? I, I just love when they say great city and there's always crime. Um, anyway, but here's what- and The we... city is also literally cursed. <laughs> now... Lazy writing in my opinion, but whatever. <laughs> Somebody wanted to boast about Gotham. Don't don't be don't be taking down that boastfulness. Um, <laughs> anyway, but during this broadcast, we enter Wayne Manor. Now, it's something that we have not seen in quite some time because Batman is thought to be missing at this point in time, um, or he's kind of gone MIA. Now, we go into the Batcave, but somebody's there that's not supposed to be there. That's Supernova. Now. Supernova is kind of looking around, pulls some cloths off, starts seeing collection. He turns around and sees the Robin costume. But then he turns his eyes towards something else, takes the cloth off, and there sits a glove that resembles the Infinity Gauntlet that Thanos wears, um, if you want to call it in the MCU, or pretty much it looks like the MCU version that Hulk creates. Um, but that's where we leave Supernova for this issue. Because then we go to Steel. Now, Steel currently is in Metropolis on day three. And this is where this story kind of takes a unique twist. Um, Mary, would you kind of agree with me in this situation before I jump into? Oh, for sure. Um, this is a very different characterization, it feels, of John Henry Irons than we last saw. Yeah. So, of course, there's a fire going down in downtown Metropolis at an apartment building. and they're trying to get everybody out and firefighter one of the firefighters decide to run in to confirm that the building's been cleared and to try to get somebody out of there that's trying to hold up and we find out this is john henry irons utilizing his new powers that lex purposely gave to him now he confirms that everybody's out and he tells the firefighter to get out because at this point, this is three stories coming down at once. You're not going to survive if you don't get out of here. And I can only last on. Just make sure that the water's ready for me. So he holds on. The guy gets out, jumps at one of the other firefighters to get her out of the way. Here comes Bill with John Henry Irons because he's walking out of this fire pretty much naked. Um, and... They douse the water on him, and he makes the joke. And this is something like we just said, but Mary said. He states, so anybody got some metal polish or a scrubbing pad? And he's sitting there smiling. So we turn to the next panel, and he's all buffed out, ready to go. And the firefighter kind of reminds him that, you know, without you, we would have lost a few people today. You hadn't done what you did. And he goes, I didn't do any more than, I, than you or your crew lieutenant. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, all of them gone. It's time all of us did our part. He's interrupted, though, because here comes Kayla. Now, Kayla has been his doctor's right-hand person that's been working with him, trying to test on how they can get rid of this metagene. And on top of it, somebody who consoles him, or John Henry Irons when needed. And she actually has a bit of news that might be able to get rid of the metagene therapy that Lex has instilled in him. And she states, 
that she ran the analysis three separate times. I don't know how it get how it works, but you can bet that Luther knows it's there and how to activate it. It makes perfect sense if he can give every man superpowers and John interrupts and then theoretically he can take them away just as easily. We've got trouble. Then we turn back to somebody Mary loves to do a voice impression about. Um, if you if you want to go check it out, go check her out as she tries to talk for Lobo, which makes me laugh so loudly on the podcast. Um, so Mary, why don't you take it away with Lobo and where we're at? So yeah, so we're back with Lobo. We're on day six of this lovely, lovely week. Um, I say lovely as though everything isn't going in a very weird direction out in space. <laughs> Um, because we we open, of course, with with Lobo. Um, going. Uh, <clears throat> give me a second. In the name of the, oh, the everlasting triple fish god, will you calm down? So there's a little bit of seismic activity. Big deal. Why don't you join me in a few uplifted hymns and put it out of your minds? Um, and of course, we see the dolphin that we saw last time, the talking dolphin, um, telling Lobo, who apparently cannot talk to anybody in his um very devout crowd um that they're demanding that he takes action to study the plate tectonics um and starfire says they're demanding more than that i definitely recognize the words blood and limb from live in standard musty and binary <laughs> <laughs> um and we, we get to see uh, Buddy Baker start to talk about how they're, they've probably out, outlived their welcome <laughs> here in um, Lobo's church to the triple fish god. <laughs> and Lobo starts talking about leaving the congregation behind. Um, so as soon as we hit civilized space, we'll send help back for you guys. Starfire then starts to sort of deviate from Buddy and Adam in their little group. Um, Buddy and Adam are sort of ready to leave. They're refueled. They're ready to go. And Starfire says, but they lost their homes, entire worlds. Because I know how that feels, and you should too. And some of these creatures are just children. Um, we're seeing the dolphin once again talk to Lobo, sort of talking about how Lobo has the power of the eye that he, in theory, should be able to use to save the flock. And Lobo says, you know I can't, and you know why. And the fish, got, the fish essentially tells him, this might be a good time to offer up your most fervent prayer. <laughs> but then they hear a scuttling in the sky. And a swarm of what I'm referring to as space parasites, because I'm not quite sure how else to define them. Um, it's essentially like space locusts is how they seem to me and sort of how they're described. Um, and Starfire is like, hey, buddy, stay behind me. I'm back on full charge. And he's like, hey, there, there are animals here. <laughs> he might not know what they are, but they're here. Um, because we we do sort of get to see Buddy figure out how the animals work on page. Where he's like, "Oh, fireballs!" Um, and they even ask Buddy's like, "What are we up against, Lobo?" And Lobo says, "The miraculous power of prayer, my son, in the form of interstellar carrion that feed off dead and dying planets." <laughs> And we, we see Buddy um, sort of just kind of parkouring around, for lack of a better way to phrase it, um, spitting fireballs at all of these space parasites. We get to see Starfire shooting off energy beams. Um, even Lobo says, you can't all convert at once. Um, and then we see him get attacked by the space parasites. And this eye just kind of like falls out of this chest he's been carrying. With, with him cussing up a storm while he's yes. 
we see one of the creatures that was in the flock pick up the eye, um, start chanting something. Um, there's a green glow and a massive green power wave, and then an explosion. And we see some of the creatures clutching Starfire's legs go, Mama! <laughs> um, Buddy is doing his best, uh, but he does need an assist from Adam Strange, who has returned to the ship through which he can see um, and is using the ship's lasers to essentially attack all of these parasites. Um, Corey, they essentially discover very quickly that there's no way that the three of them are beating all of these. Even Buddy says, Corey, no, there's too many. And then Corey takes the eye and says, it's not over until I try this. And then there's a massive green glow that can be seen light years out in space. And then we see a giant cybertronic alien creature missing an eye whose other eye is glowing green, the same green that we just saw with a speech bubble in a language that is not English. No. <laughs> and <laughs> Buddy is looking at the throng of worshippers. Could someone please tell them I'm uncomfortable with worship? <laughs> we see Starfire being the one to sort of reach out to all of these alien life forms on the planet essentially trying to calm them all down, saying, don't be scared, everyone's safe now, promise we'll send spaceships to rescue you as soon as we reach civilization. Lobo is rebuilding himself from his own blood, as he does. And he reveals that they've just signed a death warrant for everyone here through the use of the eye. And he says, well, where did you think the all-powerful emerald eye of Ekron came from? It was ripped right out of the emerald head of Ekron. He'll tear the cosmos apart to get it back. And he reveals to the trio that they have to get their spaceship hitched up to his bike as fast as possible so they can get out of here because they have a, a long ways to go yet. They have to get out of there before Ekron does. Which then brings us to the origins. So it is this week um, we are covering the origins of Adam Strange. Of course, this is written by the great Mark Wade, which as always is great when it comes to Adam Strange. Um, starts off by stating from the heart of the Alpha Centauri star system erupted the Zeta B. Um, of course, which does play a huge part in Adam Strange's story and his character. Um, he continues on states an earth or earthbound teleportation flare designed for one purpose to save an entire race from extinction. By chance, its target was archaeologist Adam Strange, whose own life was threatened by a lost per or Peruvian tribe he had angered while exploring the city. Because, of course, like I said, he is the great archaeologist that we know and love. Um, with no other avenue of escape, Strange leapt desperately across a gorge and vanished in a brilliant burst of light. Um, an instant later, Strange materialized on the planet Ran and was cared for by the beautiful Alana, daughter of the Zeta Beams of Venter. Um, it was love at first sight. Eventually, Adam learned that the Ranians were a sterile race. Um, of course, Pretty much to sum up the rest of it, um, he is able to bring, or him and Alana are able to conceive a child, um, and is the first kid in quite some time, um, which is Aaliyah, which is their daughter. Um, and during this time, um, he defended his new home world from a string of bizarre alien threats and inspiring the Rainians to rediscover their honor and courage. Um, and like we said, of course, they have their daughter and so on and so forth. Um, their powers and weapons, um, Adam Strange is known among the superhero community as a brilliant technician and thinker. He is also Earth's foremost scholar and authority of extra, extraterrestrial races. 
His spacesuit allows him to create hand or handheld plasma macers with a thought and enables interstellar travel and limited teleportation. Um, some of his essential storylines, of course, is Adam Strange Archives, Adam Strange the Man of Two Worlds, Adam Strange Planet Heist, and the Rand Thanagar Roar. Um, if you guys want a good read, go read Planet Heist. That is such a great story, and so is the Rand Thanagar War. Um, but yeah, that ends this week's issue. Um, this ends week 20 of our book club. Like we said, please go check out this playlist. Um, we do have weeks one through 19, so you can get caught up to where we are at this point. This will lead right to week 20. Um, next week, we are going into week 21. Um, so yeah, check us out on YouTube. This is where you can find this series. Enjoy it just as much as we do. Um, you can also find us on um, for what was it? Spotify for podcasters, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, other platforms for some other great anime and comic book content. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Common Talkers. And without further ado, my name is Brandon. And I'm Mary. And may comics always be the top of your discussion.